Systems Theory Basics. Systems theory is rooted in biology, but also plays out in gestalt psychology, ecology, social networking, and physics, and in particular, quantum mechanics. Systems theory is about a perspective shift from parts to the whole, and looking at, instead of objects, relationships, and connecting the dots, if you will, and from measuring to mapping those connections. It is also a shift from quantitative analysis of data to more qualitative analysis of data, and also a shift from structures to understanding processes, and lastly, from objective knowledge to epistemic knowledge, which is knowledge about knowledge. It is an acknowledgement that the observer has an impact on what they are observing and measuring. That there isn't really an absolute, but by participating in the world, you are affecting the world which you are observing and trying to measure as well. It's also recognizing that your worldview affects how you perceive something. This is why it's often difficult to agree with people on things, because you are bringing your own worldview. So systems theory is really about causal feedback systems. A gives rise to B, which gives rise to C, which feeds back and adjusts A again. This is called a feedback loop, and this is happening all of the time in natural systems and in social systems too. There are two kinds of feedback loops, negative feedback, which despite the name are actually a good thing. Systems that are stable and in homeostasis are in, in a negative feedback loop. A good example of this is a non, in a non-living system of a house thermostat. As temperature rises, the thermostat responds by turning off the heat or turning on the air conditioning. As the temperature drops, the opposite occurs. This keeps the system within an acceptable variation of tolerance. Living systems do this when they are in balance. All the chemical reactions in your body, which are maintaining the body's temperature and maintaining the chemical composition of your body, work with negative feedback loops to keep it in balance, or homeostasis, we say, within the parameters that your body needs to maintain so that you can stay alive. Let's look at an example. If your body activity increases, you use up more oxygen to be able to burn the food needed for the energy to power your muscles. Your body responds by increasing the heart rate to increase blood flow to the muscles. This decreases the oxygen in your blood, which then sends a signal to the lungs to breathe faster to increase the oxygen coming into the body and to get rid of the carbon dioxide waste that was left behind by the cell respiration that increased during the muscle activity. A positive feedback loop is not usually a good thing. This usually is a system out of balance, so let's return to the thermostat example. We start at 70 degrees, and if the temperature begins to increase, the thermostat should turn off the heat but maybe there is a malfunction or maybe someone puts a wet paper towel on the thermostat to trick it into reading a lower temperature. Something I used to do when wrestling. When I needed to sweat more to lose more weight, we'd cover the automatic thermostat in the wrestling room with a wet paper towel to trick it into increasing the heat. And we could get the room temperature up over 80 degrees. The thermostat instead turns on more heat, which raises the temperature even more. This is the system's thinking behind understanding global warming. Carbon dioxide added to the atmosphere, which increases the temperature as that gas in the atmosphere traps the sun's heat. We continue to add carbon dioxide and the temperature rises, which melts the ice caps, which is actually reflecting sunlight and helping to reduce the temperature. As the ice melts, the open ocean increases in surface area which actually absorbs heat, which then contributes to this snowballing effect. More ice melts, the planet gets warmer and absorbs more heat from the sun, gets warmer, more ice melts, absorbs more heat, and like a snowball rolling down a hill, once it starts, it's really hard to stop. 
Cancer cells are also an example of a positive feedback loop. Your cells in your body have a mechanism to shut themselves down if they detect a mutation or damage to the DNA. If that gene is damaged, you inherit a bad copy from your parents, or it gets damaged by a carcinogen, then that cell shouldn't replicate itself because it's damaged. And instead, it starts to replicate itself and continues to replicate itself, making more and more cells until it grows into a tumor. So these are all examples of positive feedback loops. But generally, what the body is needing for maintaining homeostasis are negative feedback loops to keep things constant. There are, of course, times when positive feedback loops are indeed positive. This is when the need for change exists. A system resists change as long as it can, but if pushed too far from equilibrium, it will change quickly using a positive feedback loop to establish a new homeostasis which then stabilizes and becomes the new normal that is then maintained with a negative feedback loop.